Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's move to the next point. Uh, been talking about how we being the part of covenant, how do we receive what God has for us and what God has for us uh, even in the part of the new covenant. So uh, next point, I'm on page 63 still. Uh, we are overtaken with blessings. When we read Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, there's this whole portion where God tells the people of Israel, these are the blessings that will overtake you. Let's read 28, Deuteronomy 28. It's a long portion. Verses 1 to 14. Yes, could one of us please read that? Zilatoli, if you can read that. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. If anyone else can read, it's all right. John. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 onwards. Now it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. All these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the offspring of your body and the procedure produce of your ground and the offspring of your beasts, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before you. They will come out against you one way and will flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing upon you in your bonds and in all that you put your hand to. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself as he swore to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will be afraid of you. The Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the offspring of your body and in the offspring of your beast and in the produce of your ground in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open for you his good storehouses, the heavens to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you only will be above, and you will not be underneath, if you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I charge you today, to observe them carefully, and not to turn aside from any of the words which I command you today, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Uh, pass your own mute. Thank you, John. Uh, so we see here, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 28, God is giving this wonderful list of blessings. And right? he says, these blessings shall overtake you. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your ground, fruit of your body, your, your netting bowl, your baskets will be full. Uh, when the enemy comes one way, he will, he will be defeated in your face. Uh, the Lord will uphold you. The Lord will grant you plenty. He will make you the head, not the tail. Uh, and, and, you know, every time you go back and listen to this covenant, every time you say that you are part of the covenant, these are the blessings that will overtake you. So it's like God is telling Moses, Moses, it's been a couple of years now that we've been on in this Egypt. We've, from Egypt, we are in the deserts. Yes, the people have been disobedient. Uh, they have turned away from me in certain places. They have gone to foreign gods. They have worshipped idols. Yet, I want you to write this and remember to tell them that if you believe and be part of the covenant, 
that I have made both with Abraham and the covenant that I've made with you, these blessings shall overtake you. But verse 1 says this very emphatically. It says, if you diligently obey the Lord. What does the word diligently mean? The word diligently is to wholeheartedly, with all your heart, mind, and soul, not just this one time, but all the time. Be diligent means to uh, be consistent in something. Right? So God is telling Moses, if you diligently ask the people of Israel to obey my voice, to observe the commandments that I've given, and when you do that, these blessings will follow. Now, the same thing we can translate it as people of the new covenant. Now, when we diligently hear the voice of the Lord, when we diligently obey the word, these blessings will follow us. It's not like these blessings are only for the old covenant. It's not like it's only for the people of Israel and not for us. No. God is saying, when you are part of this covenant, when you diligently obey the word of the Lord, maybe we are praying, seeking the Lord, you know, every day we are spending time in worship, reading God's word, meditating, diligently seeking Him. These blessings will overtake us. It will overtake us. We shall be the head and not the tail. God will bring, make us fruitful. Our hands will be a hand of blessing to bless others. He will open up the heavens. Why? Because we are obeying the covenant which God has for us. Now picture this. Later on when we see, uh, when we continue to read, God blessed the nation of Israel. And during the time of David and, and, and Solomon, Israel was a blessed nation. Right? Solomon had riches that we could not even talk about or think about. God blessed them. God used this little man or young boy named David and as a shepherd boy, God used him to and made him the king of a nation. So as covenant people, you and I can declare this over our lives. We, we declare, God, I am blessed. You may not feel blessed, but I am blessed. Right? Uh, uh, God, you have blessed the fruit of my body. You will bless me. You will make me the head. You will open doors for me. Your favor will surround me. And these are verses that we can declare over our lives. God is a God who has covenant people in community with each other. You know, when when the people of Israel came out, when the people came out of Egypt, they were in the pro, in the exodus in the desert. God gave them instructions. He told them how to live in harmony with each other. Was there challenges? Yes, plenty. <clears throat> we do read that Moses was having a very difficult time handling all these people with all the quarrels and you know uh, petty theft and things that were happening among the Israelites. But God said, I've made a covenant, I brought you out, but I'm making a covenant of with all of you to live in community with one another. Live by taking care of each other, welcome the stranger, care for people, care for the orphaned, care for the widowed. And then God gives certain instructions on how to eat, how to live, how to drink, what to, what are the customs to follow, all the instructions God gave them. God knew, God told them that just as, you know, I was with Abraham, he especially he said that to Joshua. He said, just as I was with Moses, so I shall be with you, Joshua. Right? You will be taking these people of Israel into the promised land. So as covenant people, just because God has given us all these blessings and it's there for us, there are also certain, you know, certain kind of priorities that we must have in place to live in community, to, to take care of each other, to welcome the stranger, meaning just to care for people, to, uh, to care for the orphan, to care for the poor. And being part of the covenant is not only a part of receiving, but it's also a 
part of giving. That's why he goes on and he says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. God is giving us all these blessings, but it's also a blessing to give unto others. Let's look at how David believed this covenant and how God used him. Now picture this. There are many great people. God is using uh, Samuel in a, as a mighty prophet during that time. The people of Israel are saying, give us a king, give us a king. God is saying, you don't really need a king. He said, no, give us a king. Okay, the God says, let's make Saul the king. Saul is made king. And this is a wonderful thing. You know, when, when we read portions of uh, First Samuel, it says that, uh, when when Samuel became the when Saul became the king, and years later he disobeyed God, right? With the offer he got the animals from this from Moab and he offered them to God and and Samuel comes and uh, you know corrects him and says uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. What does Samuel say there? He says Saul, there was a time in your life when you thought very small of yourself, right? Saul was just an ordinary man. He was not not a great, you know, uh, not from a big family. Just an ordinary man. His father used to look after donkeys, so it was. It was he was not some rich man. No, he's a very simple man. But God chose him, made him the king, and when he became the king, he forgot about, you know, uh, obeying God. He forgot that he is part of the covenant which he has to follow. And he disobeyed God. And God reminded him by saying that, Saul, there was a time when you were very small in your own eyes. Just because I made you the king of Israel doesn't mean you don't have to follow the covenants. You don't have to follow the, 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 you know, the blessings that I've given to you. Doesn't mean that you can just do whatever you want. And from then on, uh, uh, you know, the anointing left him. But what happened? This man named Goliath comes and you know defying the armies of Israel, saying, you know, who wants to come? None of them are willing to go. Can you picture this? All of them, the army of Israel, everyone were part of the covenant. What happened here? Everyone were part of the covenant. None of them were willing to go and fight Goliath. What had happened was the covenant was there but they did not receive or it did not become life into them. God uses this young man, David. David says, hey, I am part of a covenant. God has made a covenant with me. So I don't have to be afraid of this Philistine because God says I've made you the head and not the tail. And, you know, he has all these blessings for us. So God will keep his covenant. And we know the story. David goes forward, he says, I'll go, I'll defeat this Philistine. And he defeats Goliath. What happened? He remembered that David, he himself reminded himself, I am part of the covenant of the God of Israel. And this shepherd boy killed a warrior. What does it teach us? It teaches us an important lesson that when we remind ourselves that we are part of a covenant, part of God's covenant. When the enemy comes against us, or you know, Goliaths may come and stand in front of us, we must remind ourselves we are part of God's covenant. Right now, especially during these seasons, COVID and pandemic, maybe we are seeing storms ahead of us, challenges ahead of us, uh, things that you know we plan to do are not coming through. But we can say, God, I know I'm part of your covenant. I will continue to walk as a covenant person. I will continue to walk with the authority, the anointing that you have blessed me with. And that's what happened to David. God made him the king. Did David make his share of mistakes? Yes. Plenty of mistakes. But he reminded himself that David didn't think, I'm sure David didn't think to himself he's going to be the king of Israel. I'm sure when he was anointed, he would have thought, okay, what just happened? He must have gone back to the uh, fields and looked after his uh, father's sheep. 
uh, but it did not, you know, it, 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 his his whole perspective of the covenant did not change. He said, I'm part of the covenant. And so the same way, you and I, just like how David, there will be people around you who will bring you down, say this is not possible, this is not, this is not something that you can do. Stand fast, hold fast to the covenant that God has given us. Now sharing that, you know, uh, during the time of Christmas, uh, you know, many of many people told me, you know, don't do carols anywhere outside. There's persecutions. There's going to be trouble. People will come. And so I had put it away. Thought, okay, let me not do any carols. But one day when I woke up, uh, you know, just I had this in my spirit. The Lord is telling me, I have made you a blessing to this city. And it was just there in my heart. I've made you a blessing to the city. And no weapon fashioned against you. So all these powerful verses come, started coming into me. I said, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And so I remember thinking to myself, no, we have to do something. We have to reach out. We have to share the gospel. We have to share the love of Christmas to people. They should understand. They should know God is with me. I'm part of his covenant, his protection, his blessings are on me. So uh, I remember just calling up, uh, the, the malls and say, telling them, you know, uh, we want to do carols. They gave us dates. Uh, we went and saw the places, the venues. And we did all the carols. We shared the gospel in all the malls. And after the events, uh, one of the, you know, organizers of the mall were so happy with the whole event that they said, uh, you know, all I did, all we did was we played Christmas carols. We shared about Jesus. Uh, it was quite intimidating because there were many people from different faiths standing there. But I kept telling myself, God, I'm part of your covenant. You are there with me. And after the whole event, the organizers came to us and said, you know, we're so happy that you came. In the year, next year, 2022 Christmas, we want to send you to you know, different cities. They want us to go to Mumbai and Hyderabad and uh, some more cities to go and, you know, do carols. And so what am I trying to say? There will be times when the enemy will intimidate. There will be times when the enemy will say, you cannot do this, right? But if God is putting in our hearts and, and we know that, you know, we, we are part of God's covenant. We know that God is with us. God is assuring us, go ahead and do what God is calling you to do. Don't let other voices tell you what to do. Now, all the people, the pastors, leaders said, don't do anything because there's going to be trouble. But, I, but the important thing is we are to listen to the voice of God. God has made the covenant with us. Right? And so he will choose to bless us. What if we didn't go? We wouldn't have got opportunities to go to different cities and do carols. And, and you know, for 2022, we are looking at doing at different cities in our nation, all because of this. Right? So there will be things that you are going through. Stand fast. Stand fast on the covenant. Stand fast on the promises that God is giving you. Uh, I want to apologize for the sound. I think there's some uh, renovation work that's happening above me. Sorry about that. Right. So let's move on. God is saying it's also with your descendants. Deuteronomy 30 and 6. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Isaiah 59, 21. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forever. So God is saying, when I give the covenant, I'm giving it to you, to your descendants, to your descendants, and your descendants' descendants. What a wonderful God. What a wonderful God. It's not like God is saying, I will only bless you. 
you know sometimes we look at our lives and we think you know i didn't do much to especially you know i myself when i look at myself i say i didn't do much to you know oh, when yeah we you know we pray we have we worship the lord we pray as family and but what did we do that we are blessed what did we do that you know god is blessing us in so many different ways it is because god has probably our descendants the blessings have just passed on and on and on and on and it will go on to the coming generations as well why because god has promised it it will be with your descendants and the descendants so each one of us if you know we are part of his covenant we teach it to our children then it goes from our children to our children's children and it goes on to descendant after descendant and god will continue to bless all that he said to moses in deuteronomy chapter 28 all those blessings will flow into our lives into our children's lives and children's children why because it's a covenant that is everlasting there's no due date to that covenant it's not like god is saying okay 2025 the covenant ends no it's an everlasting covenant it will go on but here it says go on and we see that not everyone obeyed the covenant there was there were people who violated that covenant who broke the covenant what is the meaning of violating it's it is to it is to break it certain rules you just break that rule you've violated the rule or if you made a promise and you break that promise with a friend you have violated that promise what happens there's defeat there was suffering there was captivity let's read leviticus chapter 26 14 to 16 leviticus 26 14 to 16 now we read the blessings now let's read what happens when we violate the covenant yes any one of us leviticus 26 14 to 16 Yes anybody but if you do not obey me and do not carry out all these commandments if instead you reject my statutes and if your soul abhors my ordinances so as not to carry out all my commandments and so break my covenant i in turn will do this to you i will appoint over you a sudden terror consumption and fever eyes and cause the soul to pine away and also you will sow your seed uselessly for your enemies will eat it up uh, yeah thank you john yeah was uh, i think your voice was 16, cutting off right? yes what till verse 16 yes okay oh, yeah. yeah yeah so there are consequences for violating the covenant when we obey the covenant we receive everything that god has for us but when we disobey we are violating the covenant what does he say uh, if if you despise my statutes your soul abhors my judgment you so that you do not perform all the commandments i will also do this to you i will appoint terror upon you now we need to understand the scriptures meaning what god will let go of his hand now when we are part of the covenant god has us in his protection when we say no i don't want to be part of this covenant i don't want to believe in god i don't want the promises that he has us all this is a lie we turn our face away from god and we go away from to the things of this world god takes off his hand and when god takes off his hand what happens the enemy comes in suffering is something that will happen there is defeat there'll be captivity right now when we read in the old testament they were continuously violating the covenant what happened god sent a love the babylonians to come and destroy jerusalem then the second time it happened then the assyrians came then the amalekites came so there was so much of 
you know, or because they were violating, they were taken into captivity for many years. Daniel was in captivity. Even though they were in captivity, God continued to keep his commandments. God continued to keep his, you know, covenant by saying, still I will bless you. Now when we read the Old Testament, we may think, oh, you know, uh, God is so strict. No, he's not. There were consequences for violating the covenant. And even though the people of Israel were in captivity, living in sin, God continued to bless them. It was like, okay, you've broken your side of the covenant. I haven't broken mine. You've gone into exile. You've gone into uh, this place in Babylon. The Babylonians have come and defeated you. It is because you have broken the covenant. Yet, I will still choose to bless you. I will still choose to honor you in the place that you are. Right. And now in the new covenant, God is calling us and he's saying we are part of the ark, you know, the, the, the new covenant. We are part of all the blessings that was there in the old and also the, cover, the blessings that are there in the new. Right. So I, I, I think we'll stop here. We want. I'll pick up. We can pick up from Jesus under the old covenant from next class, so that we, uh, you know, try to you know break it up. Is everything okay? Is uh, is it too much of material? Are you able to understand? Uh, yes, they're totally salt of the covenant. Salt, okay, Zilatoli has a question. Salt of the covenant to be offered with all offerings. Salt covenant, uh, numbers 18, 19 mentioned. Must be between 20, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, the the mention of salt is uh, in in Leviticus, God is telling the people, uh, you know, you, you put salt. Salt was, uh, you know, it was like... A, a, it's like adding flavor, right? You add flavor to, you know, if you're eating something, you add salt, it, it's flavor. You remember the uh, the offering where, you know, uh, of unleavened bread, they don't add anything, right? It's, uh, it was to signify that they were living in, uh, you know, they were not part of uh, the things of this world. But salt was more of an ingredient they would add. Uh, uh, there was no kind of a significance as such only to the salt but uh, the salt covenant was more of you know saying that uh, 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 everything that we have the the, the food the uh, the offerings that we are giving is is going to be unto God and it let it be a pleasing aroma in God's uh, in God's eyes so uh, we can talk more about the salt covenant maybe next week. Uh, but let me just check if there's anything more that's mentioned on the salt covenant. One thing we know that is in the salt covenant, uh, it, the, the salt was only to bring taste and good aroma to the uh, food. And so basically it was more of, you know, let the Lord be pleased with our offerings. Uh, yeah. So if there's anything more mentioned in that, we can talk about it next week too. Yeah, we can also talk about it in the New Covenant where the Lord Jesus mentions salt. So, uh, But as far as I know, uh, salt was to add flavor, to add fragrance to uh, food that we eat. And so it was more to say that, God, let this be uh, a, a good offering in your sight, a pleasing offering in your sight. Right. right. Any other question? Any other question? Any other thoughts? I would encourage you to... Sorry, go ahead, Joe. I, I have a question, actually. Um, okay, you know, in the New Testament, Jesus said, like, you have suffering while you are in the world. And now that we are talking about the covenants in the Old Testament and all the blessings that we have in the suffering that comes to us when, what comes to us, came to Israel when they break the covenant. So I, I had this thought about like why Jesus 
like promise suffering under the new testament like the new covenant because that comes with the christ like like um the christian career or the christian path and how like what what can we infer about that in the old covenant where suffering only came from doing like breaking or by violating the covenant so we're just trying to understand yeah. Yeah. how or why or i don't know yeah that's a, that's a very good question joy uh uh, I, I struggled with that as well. But let me give you a, a succinct answer. Uh, let me try to be as clear as possible. Now, we know that, you know, the enemy, he comes to kill, to steal, to destroy, right? And mm -hmm. once Adam, Adam fell, um, sin entered this world, right? Now, God made this covenant saying that when you are part of this covenant, these blessings will follow you. These are the things that you can walk with, right? Yet, there, the, just because now we are in this covenant, the enemy is also working on his side, right? Now, he mm -hmm. is trying to do all he can to get people to not believe, to lack faith, and he's trying all he can. Right? And the Lord Jesus, so sometimes, you know, we, we have sickness, we have troubles, right? Now, there are different kinds. Now, we must understand, for example, if I go to a colder place, a colder city, right? And I don't wear my jacket, I don't wear something warm, right? And I don't look after myself properly. I end up getting a cold and a fever. Uh, now, mm -hmm. I can't say that the enemy is doing that to me. Right? Uh, that's what I have done. I have not looked after myself, not taken the proper care. And so I've got cold and fever. Uh, uh, but there will be times, uh, you know, that the, when we are, uh, uh, you know, when we are doing everything right, yet we seeing the enemy uh, trying to bring trouble in our parts. Now, here's the thing. We must understand that, yes, we are part of the covenant. But why is this trouble coming? You must understand that God sometimes allows that so that he will teach us. We will learn from it. And also, we will continue to depend more on God. Right Now, it does not mean that he's breaking the covenant. God, you said I will be a blessing. But here I'm going through the troubles. I'm going through difficulties. Now, just because we go through difficulties and troubles, that does not mean we are not blessed. Right? Yeah. Now, the Lord Jesus said, you know, uh, in this world, you will have tribulation. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Right. So yeah. now in the New Testament, we have all these wonderful covenants. We have all these wonderful promises. You know, uh, we have all the things that the Lord Jesus has said to us. But why is it that we are going through troubles? Why is it that we are going through constant, let's take persecution. Why is it that pastors are being beaten up and thrown into prison and uh, aren't they doing God's work? They're building God's kingdom. Yes, the enemy is working through people to cause all this uh, you know, persecution and troubles. But the established fact is that God has chosen to bless us. Whether we feel it, whether we experience it or not, God has called us into a covenant. Now, how do we, you know, the question that I also had was, you know, you know what's the point if I don't, you know, receive those blessings or experience those blessings in life? What's the point? I mean, living a good life, how will I say that, you know, I'm blessed? Here's the thing. We can... I love what Paul says, you know, when the thorn and the flesh, he says, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. So even through those challenges, even through those turmoils, even through those difficulties, we know that the enemy is working and God allows it to happen. Mm -hmm. now, remember, God is sovereign. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, if he wants, he can just completely stop it. 
right? He can completely stop a problem from coming your way. But sometimes, out of the, uh, you know, he allows certain things to happen so that we can depend on him even more. And sometimes it's, you know, problems that we face are our own challenges, right? So, for example, our own mistakes. I remember this family came up to me and said, you know, uh, we are in debt. And I asked him what happened. And he said, you know, I took a car loan, uh, which is uh, a high amount. And, uh, you know, it was early 2020. He took a car loan, a high amount. And then there was the lockdown and he lost his job. And he's got this loan and he's telling him, and now he's not able to pay it. He's gone into a financial debt. I feel sorry for him. But I, I, after we kept discussing, I realized that this young man he's in his early 30s uh, he's already got two cars and he's bought this car because he liked the car right now mm -hmm. it was not really needed but he bought it and now he's going through the consequence now whose fault is it it's not mm -hmm. like god is not blessing him he already has what he needs but then even through that god he was saying you know it's difficult but he has to deal with the with wrong decisions that he has made. And, yeah. and and God is not going to come through like, you know, it's not like God is going to come and say, I'll clear off your loan. No. So we should be wise in certain decisions that we make. Now, if I, if I know that this is a wrong step, don't take it because if we take it and then we are stuck in between, we cannot say, God, I'm part of your covenant. Now I'm stuck here. So, you need to go back. We need to rewind and check where did I go wrong, uh, right? Mm -hmm. Now, not always in certain places we are wrong. Certain places we have been right all the time. Uh, that's where God's grace comes through. I'm uh, reminded of this another uh, uh, elderly woman in our church. Uh, a very sad story. Uh, you know, at a very young age, uh, they were traveling from one city to another. And she's a very strong believer. The family is a very strong believers. They had two small children. Uh, as they were driving from one city to another, the car met with an accident. Uh, she has one son and a daughter. Son was about five years old. Daughter was about seven years old. The husband and the son died on the spot. Right? Wow. This happened 20 years back. And 20 years, for 20 years, she's been living in that, you know, I can't see my son. And you know, it's a painful, very, very painful thing. The only question she asks is, why uh, Why am I going through this? I mean, I'm a good Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I'm not, I'm, I'm just a simple teacher. But why? Why? I've not done any wrong to anybody. But you know what? She ended up that whole conversation. She would always tell me, Pastor, I'm living by the grace of God. I don't have mm -hmm. answers but I'm living only because of the grace of God. And she's there. She continues to trust God. She's continuing to say, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm delivered. God has healed me. God has restored me. It's a very, very, and her, and you know, her son and husband died on Easter Sunday. So every Easter is a reminder. 20 years back, I lost my husband and my six year old boy. It's very painful. But he gives us the grace. The Lord Jesus himself went through all of these, you know, being God. He, you know, Jesus was not murdered, but he gave his life. Right? It was his choice for us. So, uh, so it's wonderful to, even if we are going through these challenges, these turmoils, the enemies throwing at us. Uh, yes, we have to fight it. Don't accept anything. Right, Paul says in Ephesians 6, put on the armor of God and fight every work of the enemy. Uh, but there will be times the fight is too long. Sometimes the fight is short. But uh, at the end, we can say, as Paul writes to Timothy in his last letter, and he says, I have fought the good fight. I finished the race. So that's something that we can say. So I hope this answers your question, uh, Joy. Yeah, thank you so much. God bless. Uh, any other thoughts, any other question? Okay. All right. So uh, let's stop here. We'll pick up from uh, where we stopped from next week. 
uh, I want to encourage you, if you have time, go ahead. Maybe you can go to Google uh, and, and read about those uh, offerings. It's really very interesting. The, you know, the, uh, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the Feast of the Passover, the uh, Feast of the tr Trumpets. Read about them. Get an idea of what these feasts are. What are the offerings? Uh, you know, you don't have to read deep into them, but you can just get an idea of what they are. And uh, really, it'll open up your mind to such beautiful covenants that God made for us uh, and that we are still part of, uh, including this new covenant uh, all right, let's close in prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can close in prayer. Uh, Rosalind, can you please close in prayer? Or Zeli, Zeli, if you can please close. Okay, sure, Pastor. Father, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you so much for this. Uh, sessions, Lord, whatever truth that we have learned from these two uh, sessions, uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will continue to speak to us and minister to us, Lord. Lord, uh, as we discuss from this place, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit to guide us, lead us throughout the day, Lord. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Zeratoli. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless you.